Today we're gonna to be making this super cool kitchen stool with this really cool joinery system, these hardwood dowels, which are super easy and super strong and actually really fun. They look gorgeous, great way to accent a piece. I have free plans over on my website in both metric and imperial. There's a DXF file in there if you have a CNC. There's also a full-size printout template for these side pieces, so uh, it makes it super simple. Head over to my website and pick those up. Let's get into milling some lumber. All right, so now we're gonna break down our lumber into exact size for the top piece and the stretcher, rough size for the side pieces. We're gonna make two of those. And then we have a full size template here. So if you print this at 100%, you can stick it to a piece of MDF and cut it out. I'm not gonna walk you through template making. I'll link a really good video from my uh, friend, Sean over at Simple Cove down below but I made this template super easy for you. Check this out. So what's really easy about this is the top edge of the paper is the top edge of the template. So uh, you don't need to worry about cutting that edge. You're then going to cut this to exactly eight and a quarter. But before you do that, one thing I did to make this really easy, it's really kind of hard to see on camera probably, but there's a center mark here and this is a cornhole board size hole. So if you have a cornhole board six inch hole saw, you can just center punch right here on your template, cut this circle and then cut this exactly at eight and a quarter and you're good to go. And then you can either use like a straight line rip jig on your table saw or a track saw or a skill saw to cut these edges and it's good to go. And you shouldn't have to do any sanding. Typically when you have curves and templates, you have to sand, but if you use a hole saw, this is really easy. If not, it's really easy to cut this close with a jigsaw or a bandsaw and then just sand down to the line. So let's break down some lumber into, again, exact sizes for our stretcher and top, and then rough sizes for our edge, and then we're gonna do some flush trimming. All right, so now we are going to do some flush routing and flush trimming. The easiest way to do this, trace your template. You could use a skill saw to cut pretty close to the line. You can use your band saw. The curve, you just wanna use a jigsaw or your band saw, get as close as you can. And I have some great videos on template routing here. I'm gonna link them up here in the corner. Some good advice. Best thing I can tell you is get as close to the line as you can because uh, the less you take off with your flush trim bit, the better. If you've got that mega flush trim bit that we're gonna use from Bits and Bits, that thing's a beast, so it's gonna do pretty well no matter what, but you really do wanna clear as much material as possible. Uh, one thing that you wanna think about here is you wanna identify your center lines on your template and on the piece you're gonna cut and mark it on the edge, because we are gonna be referencing that center line for assembly when we go to put our stretcher in and everything like that. So it'd be a good time to mark that center line so that it's there and you can use it for further steps. Uh, so let's get these ready to go. Um, if you are going to be using your paper, you could transfer the hole locations, but they're also pretty easy to measure. So um, up to you. We are gonna put a chamfer now on a few edges. This is a really good time to do it. When you assemble and then try and break edges, I, it, you can end up with rounded corners and things like that where your router is not gonna fit. So you wanna be really careful about what you chamfer now. So we're gonna put a light chamfer on the stretcher and the two legs. Uh, I'm only gonna do the horizontal, ed no, sorry, <laughs> vertical edges on the legs. Uh, both sides. Then on the stretcher, we're only gonna do the bottom portion, so the part that's facing the ground. And then we're gonna put a heavy chamfer on the bottom edge of the entire top. That's gonna lighten the thickness of this while retaining strength, and it'll visually uh, make it look a lot thinner, which is 
muy bueno. And just like I always say, we don't hide our mistakes on this channel, so I've already made two. Uh, one, I cut my top too thin. It's supposed to be eight and three quarters. I misread the ruler on my table saw, so I ended up with uh, eight and five eighths. I don't think that's gonna be a big deal. And then I say it all the time, but then I'm lazy. Don't bandsaw with your templates on there. Um, I nicked my template twice, so I got uh, a kind of gouge right here. It's very small and won't be noticeable it, once everything's done, but you know, I nicked my template right here and right here because I was being lazy and I need a new bandsaw blade. It, I knocked it off the other day and so a tooth is bent, so it likes to suddenly wander and that's on me. So let's throw some chamfers on here and then we're gonna get into the dowels, which wait till you see how these things work. These are like the coolest. I, I hated dowels before I found these, so I'm super excited about these. Okay, so now it's time to put our piece together, but to do this, I wanna talk about these dowels. Now, this is not sponsored. I've always hated dowels, like I've hated them. I've always wanted to avoid them, but I found these, Mike from Tay Tools sent them to me. And uh, here's a couple sample pieces I put together just to kind of show how good they look and how fast they are. They're so fast and easy. Uh, so you can buy, they come in three different sizes. You can buy these drill bits and the drill bit, sort of like a pocket hole jig or the Festool Domino, it's sort of, just drills the perfect hole. And the dowels look like this. They're supposed to be stronger than nails. That's what the company claims. I was just looking that up actually. And they are so cool. The one thing you have to do, and you'll see here in a minute, is we have to put our stool together first. So I'll probably use like a little super glue and a clamp for a minute. Then I'll drill my holes. But you just drill your hole and then you put a little glue on the ribbed part of the dowel and you hammer it in. It comes in a bunch of different woods. Super cool. It's making me like dowels again. And putting this drawer together, I mean, this probably took me 20 minutes to build. It was just super fast. So they're really cool. And I'm excited to use them on a project and I hope that you like them. I'll link them down below. Super awesome stuff. So let's get this put together. Uh, make sure you have your center lines labeled because it's gonna be really important for alignment of the top and alignment of the stretcher when you do your drilling. So make sure you have your center lines and let's start putting this together. You notice my super glue came off, which is fine because we just needed that super glue for alignment. Um, one of the things to know about these is you wanna use a very light amount of glue because just like any joinery, glue kind of thickens things up. So you don't wanna get into a scenario where the glue is causing you not to be able to get these to fit. Okay, so we have our center lines here, which are gonna align with our center lines here. And you wanna get that centered on there. Now, depending on, when you get to this point in a project, if you've been following plans, it's important to verify your measurements in case, you know, a eighth of an inch or a sixteenth here and there, it adds up. So once it is centered, you then want to, from the underneath, you wanna to measure to the center of your board on both sides. And that's gonna tell you exactly where to drill your holes. Now on this one, I'm not gonna be using super glue because I'll be able to clamp it and still drill the two outside holes. And I have those measurements on the plan where to equally space them uh, from the outside. So if you are, again, eight and three quarters, you'll be able to measure that and get those spaced evenly. I think one thing that I'm gonna do that's gonna be really cool is I'm gonna use different size dowels. I'm gonna use the biggest size in the middle, which is bigger than the ones we used on the side, and then the two smallest ones on either side of that, which I think will add a little bit of flair, which will be cool. So let's get to putting this together.
man, this came out really cool. My daughter's gonna love this. She's been climbing all over stuff. She's almost 18 months now. So this is really fun thing to have in my kitchen. I love these dowels. I've always hated dowels. Those fluted dowels, they push glue out of the joint. They look terrible. You can't use them as exposed joinery. These are a really cool way to accent your workpiece. Uh, and I love the way they look, and I'm definitely gonna be using these a lot more, especially when it comes to making a bunch of drawers for projects. Uh, Any time that I would have used like a screw and then a plug, this is a way easier way and stronger way to do it. I don't know about if it's stronger than the screw, but they're very, very strong. I would say they're definitely as strong as a domino, if not close, and a great way to do joinery. So uh, check out that link down below if you wanna check these out. I think they're, they're pretty inexpensive. Once you get the drill bit, drill bit's only like 15 bucks and then the dowels are very cheap. You can get them in a bunch of different sizes. So highly recommend. Guys, if you want to support the channel, pick up a, one of my new aprons, a dovetail jig or a stop block. Go get those free plans. Stay safe in the shop. Have a wonderful day.